Hello, this is the jet we're going to be starting today. This is an F-16C. The simulator I am using is Falcon 4.0. And I have Red Viper add-on to it. Let's pretend you just walk up to your F-16. You are done with the external check. You walk around the aircraft making sure that everything looks normal. You kick the tires and spoke to your crew chief will help you climb into your cockpit, strap you in, and now you're just ready to cold start this baby. Okay people, here we are inside our F-16. I have the 3D cockpit. It came with a Red Viper. All the systems and instruments are shut down. We're at the ramp and our canopy is open. Once again, if I do something that you don't agree with because I don't know your mom flies an F-16 and she told you something different don't be mad at me I'm just trying to follow the manual as close as possible so here we go let's close our canopy by clicking on the canopy lever to make it go down Now, on your instrument panel, we set the parking brake so we don't start rolling once the engine is running. Now, go to the left console and set the electrical power switch to main power. And this takes two clicks. Your main power will activate some warning lights. If you go to the front, to your warning panel, you will see that your electrical system, your engine fault, your SEC, and your seat not on warning lights are on. Now that you're here, if you check your instrument panel, you will see the AOA, your angle of attack indicator, has a red flag. Your ADI, your Attitude Director Indicator has a red and yellow flag and your VVI, your Vertical Velocity Indicator has a red flag as well. And if you see your HSI, your Horizontal Situation Indicator has a red flag as well. And finally if you look up to your left and right auxiliary consoles you'll see your Master Warning Light On as well as the engine hydraulic fluid and oil pressure warning light on too. All these flags and warning lights should be gone by the time you are done starting your aircraft. Next, go to the external lights panel and set your master switch to on, your anti-collision lights to on, your wind trail and fuselage to bright and send them all to flash. This way you let everybody know around the aircraft that the jet is becoming activated. Now check outside because you don't want to suck anybody into the engine. You can see they are flashing. That's flashing. You can go to the other wing and that's flashing too. And you can also check your tail light, your strobe that is flashing too. Now we need to get this baby some fuel. So we're going to go back to the left console and set your master fuel switch to on, your engine feed to normal and double check that the EPU is set to normal. The emergency power unit is very helpful when you have a hydraulic or electrical failure. Now go to your instrument panel and check that the fuel readout switch is set to normal. 
you can see there and also be sure to test your forward and rear fuel low warning lights by right clicking on the switch you can see it coming on you can see it going off now keep going right to your right console and look for your air source switch and set it to normal and now you're ready to try to start this engine this engine is a big old thing and it needs to be rotating quite fast before it can actually lit off so go to your left console and right underneath your throttle there's a switch it's called the JFS jet fuel starter but before that make sure that your throttle is all the way back to idle to avoid any surprises now go back and click your jet fuel starter once to make it go to start too now go to your instrument panel and monitor your RPM you can see the needle rising very slowly now it's between, between 20 and 25 percent now go back to your throttle and increase your throttle by 50 percent or midway after you do that Go back to your throttle and toggle the idle to tank switch with it right there, top of your joystick. As soon as you hear your RPM going, reduce throttle back to idle and go back to monitor your RPM. Now you see it increasing. Your warning lights are gone. You see your landing gear lights, they're on. And now that you have a running engine, let's start powering up your avionics. Let's go to our right console, to our avionics power panel, and we're going to start powering up our avionics. We're going to start with the fire control computer, your storage management system, multifunction display, your upfront computer, map, data link, GPS, and finally your INS or internal navigation system. You're going to set it to align normal. And remember, your internal navigation system will take about 8 minutes to be completely aligned. 